horse hides in stitches, and inside I got all kinds of string in the cork center, and they're supposed to make us livelier in the past few years so they could knock more home runs with us. <laughs> this we could do without, you know. They say years ago when they had pitchers battles, so-called, you go through five, six innings, and the only wear and tear on you was the tobacco stains from the pitcher's fingers. Today they use something like a hundred of us poor balls during a single ball game. They cloud us. <laughs> they bang us around. <laughs> oh, it's brutal. Of course, I'm out of the profession now. I'm one of the lucky ones. But I still got all my stitches. I was hit over the fence, sure, but I wasn't pocketed by one of those excited kids and poked around the sand lots four or five years till you get punchy. Oh, how I pity those old pals of mine. They got it worse off than golf balls. A golf ball, they clout you in the rough, they can't find you. Half the time, they don't want to find you. Well, I got a very special story, and it all started one bright, sunny day at the Yankee Stadium during the last of a four-game series between the Chicago White Sox and the New York Yankees. It was the last half of the ninth with the White Sox ahead 6-3 to three and Yogi Berra up for the Yanks. I'd been in the ball sack for three days, waiting my turn. It was mighty dark in there, and there was some 50-odd balls. Every one of us trying to shove our way to the bottom and wait out the Kansas City Athletics who was coming into town tomorrow. I felt a horny hand grip my stitches. I bid a hasty goodbye to my pals. And the next thing you know, it was pitch black, and some sharp object was digging into the L in American League. It was then I realized I was in the ump's back pocket and his garage key was playing havoc with my horse hide. I peeked through the blue side seat of his trousers, which was wearing mighty thin, and noticed a crowd of 50,000 eager beavers all screaming for Yogi to bang the brains out of my erstwhile friend and companion, Sal the Ball. You should have heard the things they were yelling about poor Sal. Give it a ride, you dirty! Blast it out of the park! Tear the cover off of that ball! Can you imagine someone tearing your skin off? Think it over, folks. Well, the next thing I heard was... And a boy left me. One thing when you're a baseball, you root for both pitchers. Then it happened. There it goes! Over the wall! Yogi boy! Yogi boy! Yogi boy! I couldn't see what was going on, but I had a queer feeling Sal was not long for this ballpark. And neither was I. A few seconds later, I felt the broiling hot sun on my tender horse hide and listened to the catcher and the pitcher talk it over. The two are too bad, Lefty. Well, he was too. How are we going to work this next guy? There's a bird that's right in there. Okay. The catcher was stumping me into that greasy glove and rubbing me up so terrible, I thought he might have made a nick in me already and he'd throw me out of the game. But no such luck. They started to whip me around the infield, as they usually do with a new ball. They call it a little pepper. Little pepper in that boy! Ow! Little pepper in that boy! Ow! Hey, little pepper in that boy! Ow! This can be a frightening experience, especially when the third baseman's only two, three feet away from the shortstop. Little pepper in that boy! Ow! Put a little dirt on it for you, Lefty. Uh-oh. Ever brush your teeth with dry sand? <laughs> At last, they would get me back to the pitcher. Play ball! Well, this was it. First, I heard some encouraging talk. He can't hit you, lefty boy! Burn it past him, lefty! He cannot smell you, lefty boy! And then some terrifying statements all the way from the bleachers. Give me a ride, you dirty! Blast it out of the park! Cover off of that ball! Oh, that last guy. I'll bet he's the life of the party. Well, here's the wind-up. This ain't no joke, neither. Here I go! Straight! Well, 
that's one of them. Why, you robber. Uh oh, a rhubarb. Watch your language, you'll go out, out, out. You got a bet on the game? Shut up, you'll go out, out, out. Why, you gutless, that does it. Out, out, out. Why, you double cross and bottom of the dick, stumble bum. Now, 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 now. While all this was going on, I thought I'd grab a little nap. But the third baseman came in and took me from the catch, and before you know it, little pepper in there, boy. Ow! Little pepper in there, boy. Ow! Let's pepper it up in here, lefty boy. Ow! Soon everybody got down to business once again. Tear the cover off of that ball! Sometimes I think it's better to get hit over the wall. One hard shot, it's all over. It's those singles and doubles and line drive outs that'll send you out of your mind. You stay in there, they keep getting them bingles off you. The other way, one good smash and that's it. It's like a fighter. He gets knocked out, sometimes he's better off than staying in there, taking it 15 rounds. Know what I mean? Uh-oh. Here we go again. Ow! <laughs> Some joke hit the announcer's booth. Everybody's laughing. What a scream, huh? And play strike two one more to go the wind up and strike three little pepper in there boy Ow! little life in there boy Ow! little pepper in there old man Ow! you can't win well, the next two batters walked, and the pitcher was coming up, and I felt mighty relieved. One more out to go, it'd be all over. Pop up, pop up, pop up, I kept saying over and over to myself, the pitcher pops up, the pitcher pops up. Wait a minute, last half of the ninth, two out, what pitcher? Then I hear the announcement over the loudspeaker. Number seven, Landro. <laughs> Walk heart sunk to the inside of my twine. Mickey Mantle. Oh, what a clout this guy could give me. I started to imagine all kinds of crazy things as I seen him emerge from the dugout swinging five or six stacks. <laughs> Maybe he just gets hold of a piece of me and twists me permanently out of shape. Maybe he fouls me off about 45 times till I lose my marbles for good. Maybe he sends me on a line drive into the corner one of them hot dog griddles. I was going nuts thinking the most horrible and grizzly thought. They were brought to a quick stop by the usual guys. Well, up and out of the park, Mickey boy! Where you the ball, Mickey boy? Tear the stitches out of it and send it to Wee Hawkin. Oh, how I hated that guy. Then come that old feeling. That crazy pitcher's wind up. Ow! Ball! Oh! What a relief. They didn't even pep me around this time. With Mickey up, they were afraid he'd steal first. The catcher waved time out. He came towards the rubber. So keep it high outside. Let him hit it. The bleachers are 450 feet away. Let him hit it. Let him hit it. Maybe he's right. A long fly ball, I'll be caught, then I can get a good night's rest. Okay, catcher, I'm with you. <laughs> the pitcher took a short wind-up and let me go, high and outside. But Mickey stepped into me and let me have it. I felt myself sailing through the air as though I'd just been released from a rocket gun. Up, 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 I soared, and the crowd roared and roared and roared. The higher I went, the more they roared. I saw the bleachers way, way down below, like from a flying saucer. That's tearing the cover off it, Mickey Five minutes later, I bounced on the pavement into a sand lot. About seven, eight kids chased me. A little fella, about ten years old, scooped me up and ran away with me. But he didn't go to the subway. And he didn't go home. He was headed back to the ballpark. 
if it occurred to me I wouldn't be sacrificed to the sand lot as after all. The boy had a soul. He was taking me to be autographed by the guy who powdered me. In the locker room, a man gave the kid $50 and a brand new ball for me, and everybody was all excited like I was an heirloom or something. Even Yogi Berra kissed me. Suddenly, I realized what it was all about. Mickey had hit me for the world's longest home run. The next day, I was shipped to Cooperstown and took my place with all the other famous baseballs in history. And that's where I am today. Flanked by as nice a bunch of baseball you guys would ever want to see. Balls hit by the babe. Lou Gehrig, Frankie Frisch, Ty Cobb, and Ted Williams, Hank Greenberg, Joe DiMaggio, Willie Mays, and Trit Speaker. Boy, I'm in real solid company. They can't tear me apart in here. Some of the other balls are pretty badly beaten up, or maybe that's just the way they made them in those days. I shouldn't really complain, but you know where Mickey signed me? It still hurts.